One of the topics that my students in CCNA Data Center here at CBTNuggets.com are so excited about is fiber channel over Ethernet. A lot of them don't have a lot of experience with this particular technology, and quite frankly, they're not even completely sure what it is and why we would benefit from it in a modern data center. In this micro nugget, we're going to take a look at just that, the fiber channel over Ethernet protocol, and I'm going to go ahead and introduce it to you here. Think about the modern day data center. There's LAN stuff and there's SAN stuff. And this equipment and these links are specific for the SAN and this equipment and those links are specific for the LAN. What if we could marry those two? What if we could take the SAN traffic and send it over the same equipment and links as we are doing the LAN traffic? Would there be benefits? There sure would be. The first benefit we would see would be a reduction in the number of different server adapters that we need to manage, right? In the LAN, we know there are network interface cards. In the SAN, we know there are host bus adapters. What if we could just buy one thing, a CNA? This acronym stands for Converged Network Adapter. And converged means that it has the ability to understand the LAN traffic as well as the SAN traffic. So this would be great, simplifying the acquisition of adapters for host machines experiencing the information. Wouldn't there be a dramatic simplification in cabling? Sure, because what we would do is we would cable for 10 gigabit per second Ethernet. And by the way, let's make that clear right now. In order to do this small miracle called fiber channel over Ethernet, we rely on 10 gigabit per second Ethernet systems. So cabling would be simplified. We would be just taking advantage of a 10 gigabit per second cabled infrastructure. Unifying the traffic would also allow us to take advantage of great layer two domains with complete multi-path capabilities, right? What we could do would be we could take advantage of virtual port channels, we could take advantage of Cisco's fabric path technologies, and we could have these really large multi-path robust layer two domains for the LAN and the SAN. Overall, total cost of ownership would be reduced because we would be dealing with unified equipment instead of separate LAN and SAN equipment. And it would be really excellent from an operational standpoint, right, to have that unified fabric. In other words, we have one set of engineers trained in the unified infrastructure and they would be able to handle LAN and SAN manners instead of a real segregated IT department with the LAN people on one side and the SAN people on the other. Finally, finally we could do really a centralization of management, couldn't we? Yeah, we would be able to really utilize software to manage the entire data center because it could reach across both the LAN and the SAN. So lots of really compelling reasons to look at a unified fabric of fiber channel over Ethernet. Now please keep in mind that this isn't going to be all that easy. I mean think about it. The LAN focuses on Ethernet connectivity and the SAN focuses on fiber channel connectivity. The LAN packet loss happens, and it's okay. The LAN can deal with it. In the SAN, we can't deal with packet loss. So the engineers really had to get very creative with the creation of technologies in order to marry these very different environments. So to pull this off, there needs to be a lot of requirements that are met. The first one I want you to know is that the entire fiber channel frame needs to be carried in the payload of a single Ethernet frame. So we're going to have some big Ethernet frames. We call these, of course, jumbo frames. So we need to support jumbo frames in order to pull this off. 
also think about layer two naming. We need to be able to take port worldwide names and we need to be able to map those to MAC addresses that are used in an ethernet environment. And we need an additional protocol to handle login of fiber channel devices across a unified fabric. So the engineers invented FIP. This is fiber channel over ethernet initialization protocol. Okay, so when we see IP here, think initialization protocol. Next, we need lossless delivery in the ethernet environment. This means no packet loss. And finally, a requirement that we've already mentioned is we're gonna need a minimum of 10 gigabits per second as the technology that is used for this unified fabric. So pretty remarkable. We take the fiber channel information and we encapsulate it in our ethernet frame. The ether type value that is utilized in order to identify this is 8906 in hexadecimal. If you look inside the ethernet packet, you will see that, uh, frame I should say, there is a four bit version field. And then you'll see in there the encapsulated fiber channel information. And that's it. Everything else in the Ethernet frame is what we would expect, like the source MAC address, the destination MAC address, the IEEE 802.1Q tag would be in there. Everything else would be normal. Now, what about the size? Well, a fiber channel frame consists of 36 bytes of headers and as many as 2,112 bytes of data for a maximum size of 2,148 bytes. So the encapsulated fiber channel frame has all the standard headers, and we need to accommodate this maximum fiber channel frame in our fiber channel over ethernet frame. So we define a default MTU for the fiber channel over ethernet of 2,240 bytes. So there's our max MTU for this unified fabric environment. So there you have it, an introduction to fiber channel over ethernet. I hope you consider joining me in our CCNA data courses here at cbtnuggets.com where we'll take a much more in-depth look at this and many other exciting cutting edge technologies. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.